Well, greetings and salutations, everyone. Welcome back once again to the Farts and Crafts show, or might be your first time here, I guess. Uh, welcome, regardless. Hope you guys are doing well. I have a bit of an update video for you guys about the quote-unquote best SSD for your PS4 Pro or base model PS4, but I'm using a PS4 Pro, so that's what I'm going to be talking about. And this is what I'm going to be talking about. The Barracuda 120 SSD from Seagate. Now, just to clarify, let you guys know, this is not sponsored in any way by anyone. All my own opinions, recommendations, that sort of thing. I haven't been able to get a PS5, so I thought, you know what, I'm going to upgrade my PS4 Pro. And I don't trust the hard drive that is essentially SATA 2 and mechanical inside of my PS4 Pro right now. The stock hard drive. So yeah, let's upgrade that sucker and add some longevity to the system. So if you're unfamiliar with the process, I'll get to that in a minute. Uh, in my 1000 subscriber special, I recommended the Crucial MX500, which is a fine SSD. Um, however, I have found in my testing and benchmarks, this thing is better for the PS4 Pro. Not definitively better, just better in this instance. And in the instance of this one, the one that I received in both instances. So if you're unfamiliar with the process, Let's go through that quickly um, of essentially how to install a new uh, hard drive into a PS4 Pro. Here's what you're going to need. Uh, you're going to need some compressed air, can of air duster, whatever you want to call it, uh, a Phillips head screwdriver, preferably about a 3.0 gauge uh, bit, a DualShock 4 with a data and charging cable, and some kind of USB external storage device, aka a thumb drive, an external hard drive, um, something of that nature. And you don't need a very high capacity one, I would recommend something that's at least USB 3.0, um, because if you go with a 2.0 thumb drive, it's going to take a long time even if you're not backing up all that much stuff. Alright, first step you're going to want to do is go to this URL or just Google PS4 system software and click the bottom button, the PS4 reinstallation file. It should download a file called ps4update.pup. Go ahead and place that into a folder called update all caps make sure that's in a folder called PS4, all caps, and put that folder on the root of that external USB storage device. Next, plug it into your PS4, go to settings, go to system, go to backup and restore, and choose backup PS4, and just say yes for this part. Um, and it's going to calculate how much free space you're going to have, how much data you have on your hard drive. And by default, it is going to select everything. Absolutely everything. Basically, it is cloning. Not exactly cloning in that sense. Um, it is a backup, but it is backing up everything on your hard drive. Now since I'm using a 32 gigabyte thumb drive, this is not going to work. So go into your applications and just deselect everything. Probably back up a few games that are pretty small because you're going to want you're probably going to want to play something while you're waiting. And um yeah, after selecting 11 small games uh, and, of course, all the save data, all the captures, themes, settings, I still had 
almost seven gigabytes free. So that's good. Then go to next. It's going to ask you to name it, name it, click backup. It's going to prepare the backup, which yes, took five minutes, even just with that much data. And then it's going to restart automatically. And then it's actually going to do the backup process. This may take quite a bit of time if you are using a thumb drive, if you're using a high speed external hard drive like a Samsung T5 or something, you might be able to back up everything and it might not take that long. That's probably the best way to go, but if you don't have a high speed external hard drive, don't worry about it. Uh, if you have only like a USB 2.0 thumb, thumb drive, you might want to just back up your application save data, aka all your settings and just all the info for your games and apps on your PS4. And then select save data and system storage, select copy to USB storage, and then select stuff and then copy it over, back it up. I do this periodically and before I delete games anyway because I am a PS Plus member, but I don't rely on that. It's nice to have, to have some extra peace of mind, but I never rely on it. I always have my save stuff backed up at least twice. All right, so go ahead and turn off your PS4, wait a good 20 seconds, disconnect everything, um, flip it over, take off the bay cover, unscrew the uh, hard drive, um, not mounting screw, but you know, the thing holding the hard drive in place, slide it out, and make a note, when the tray is up, the pins are up. You don't want to put this thing in upside down because it's kind of a pain to screw in in the first place because this is a seven millimeter solid state hard drive. So there's going to be some extra space under it. You're gonna kind of have to balance it a little bit. I did the back screws first and then the front screws. So just to let you know, it's a little finicky. It's kind of a pain and make sure you don't strip the screws, please. So go ahead. Once you have that ready, plug it back in, plug everything else back into your PS4 Go ahead and hit the power button. And actually, before you plug everything back in and before you even put the SSD in there, a little trick for you guys. Um, while well, everything is unplugged and powered off, press and hold the power button on PS4 for a good 15 to 20 seconds. And that will do a static flush. And that will essentially do a nice little clean for the uh, circuitry of the system. So it's it's just good to do every so often. Anyway, once you plug everything back in, try to start it up, it'll automatically put you into safe mode because it'll detect a new hard drive. Go ahead and connect the DualShock 4 with the USB cable, press the PS button. Now it, it will automatically detect it has to initialize aka format the hard drive go ahead and just be like okay cool do it then it'll initialize the process is very fast and then i don't have a screenshot of this part for some reason but believe me it'll say please plug in your usb storage device with the system software and then it'll actually install just go through, follow the prompts. It's very self-explanatory. When you do that, it'll give you the welcome to PS4 screen. Go ahead and sign back in. And once you're signed in, go back to system, backup and restore, that whole thing. And instead of backup, obviously, pick restore. If you restore first and then sign in to your PSN ID, it won't work. You have to sign in first and then restore. And then, yeah, that's the final step. Once you, uh, once you're back in, you'll just have the games that you backed up and your save data that you backed up. 
Uh, if you don't, then you might have to manually um, restore your save data. So just save data on USB storage device and then copy to system storage. And I don't know if mine is actually... Yeah, mine's not connected right now. So, but it would show you all the stuff and then you just copy it over. But I have it backed up on the cloud and on my computer, so I'm not worried about it right now. Um, and yeah, we'll get to this, some benchmarks right now. So, uh, Horizon Zero Dawn, notoriously long loading screens. So, uh, let's go ahead and get a timer on screen. Thank you, Maestro. I don't know why I'm calling myself Maestro. <laughs> All right, so let's actually get to the... Uh, I don't really count the loading to... the loading your data kind of thing. Because that's kind of a different games handle that in a different way. It's not like a raw loading screen. And let's go ahead and I think this is the one, right? Most recent one. Yeah. Yeah. All right. And does it ask for confirmation? I don't remember. No, it doesn't start. There we go. Oh, that was weird. It skipped right to two. I mean, you could easily check the time the actual time with the um just the video itself but to those of you oh there we go so 22 23 seconds roughly much much better than the like a minute like 80 seconds a minute, almost a minute and a half i think was is the default time typically all right, let's go ahead and close application, do that. Also, just like system navigation is faster. Like everything is faster, which is great. I mean, you can also, I've heard some people be like, oh, well, I'd get faster times on my external hard drive and then just install the games to that. But, system software is on that your internal hard drive so um yeah next let's go ahead and do dark souls 3 um i tried to stick to games that have a ps4 pro patch which they're all meant to utilize the extra power of the ps4 pro as opposed to the base ps4 so Alternatively, if you're playing a game that never got a PS4 Pro patch, you might want to use Boost Mode on the PS4. Definitely helps with certain games like Bloodborne. Alright, let's go ahead and... Oh, see, it confirm. Okay, it asked for confirmation on that. Yep, 13 seconds. And that's pretty consistent with their Dark Souls 3. Like, every time I've tested it, it's around 12 to 13 seconds. So, like, and I figured Anor Lundo is a good area for testing that because it's a pretty big open area. So, it's one of the. It's one of the longest loading screens you'll see. And it really depends where you're at in the game. So like if I travel back to Firelink, the see the animation doesn't count. There we go. See? Only six seconds much faster depending on 
what you're doing, but you can still see the fog door up there, so it's still loading the area outside of Firelink Shrine. So it depends which area is loading, because it tries to load in kind of all the assets before you actually do things. And the game loads based on where the character is, because as you can tell, there's still a fog door up there. But if I were to approach the fog door, it would probably like instantly disappear. Because it's like detecting that I'm heading in that direction. What's going on? Oh, I think it's actually because I beat the game. I can start my... Oh, wait, no. Yeah, it just takes quite a bit of time. And again, because, like, there's a lot of data to load. So, comparatively. I think I at the end of a game cycle? I am. Okay. That's what I thought. Okay, um, let's go ahead and quit. I mean, I didn't really have to save and quit, I could have just exited, but... Alright, and now let's do Code Vein, because Code Vein also has very long, typically very long loading screens. Kind of deals with data streaming in the same way. Like Dark Souls 3 does, it, it, like chunks of data essentially loading which area you're in and progress and a bunch of other stuff. It's it, pretty similar, I've noticed. But if this were a contest, the time to beat would be six seconds. <laughs> Just saying. Um, and Dark Souls Remaster kind of deals with it in the same way, but I mean, load screens are like practically nothing on that game. And it, again, it's an older game that's barely remastered, so I don't really count that one as a good benchmark. Load screen and yeah, about nineteen seconds. That's very typical from my testing. It's about nineteen to twenty seconds, pretty much every time. So same as Horizon Zero Dawn. We'll go ahead and close that, and then last but not least, we'll get to, well, maybe, depending on, I'm not here to argue quality of games, but Cyberpunk, which uh, at the time of recording, still waiting on one point, patch 1.2, so the big one that everyone was expecting to drop at, like, was it the 26th, 27th? 26th, yeah. But this has been, like, probably the most dramatic increase I've noticed. Like, it, load screens are pretty much gone. There, like, it didn't have to load at all there, it's just like, press circle to continue. Press options to continue, which is weird, it's like, why is it circle at first and then options? It's kind of strange. Uh, and then we'll just load my file that's not terribly bugged, um, which would be this one. Oh wait, where'd my thing, where'd my thing, oh yeah. Oh, it's right there, okay, good. Um, okay, and I think it confirms, no it doesn't. There's the load screen, and... Yeah, when the lights went out there, I was cooking dinner. 
Well, if we're getting specific, I was nuking a half-eaten burrito I found wedged in my couch cushion. Yeah, yeah, I know I shouldn't have. After all, I heard my boys... 17 seconds. Yeah. It's, um... It's pretty great. It's pretty great. Um... So yeah, much, much better um, than what it was. And uh, I'd have to go back and check the other video, but it feels like it's faster than the MX-500. I don't know. I'm not going to make that comparison directly, but it seems to be a little zippier. Um... Also, you can... The MX-500 is a bit more expensive for the 500 gig and the one terabyte, like, comparatively. Again, it depends on, like, the deals. So, like I said, I got it on a slight discount just because it happened to be on sale, and I was like, oh, hey, okay, yeah, I'll get this one for, like, 50-something, 60 bucks almost. And, uh, yeah, at that price point, I would highly recommend the Barracuda 120. It's, uh, it's been working great so far. If you do want to go with the higher capacity, they do go up to 2 terabyte, um, but then you're looking at, like, $250. And, uh, or almost about that, which is, like, you know, that's the price of, uh, a Switch Lite. Why would you do that? <laughs> you know, when it's like, I don't know. I mean, typically I'm only using a handful of games at a time anyway. So, unless you like, you just want to have every game like on your hard drive. I mean, you could go with a better HDD or even like a... I mean, they make 8 terabyte solid-state drives now, but yeah, it's, uh, I mean, it's pretty common to find a terabyte hard drive for, or solid-state drive for less than 100 bucks now, and um, I mean, 500 gigabytes is totally fine. I don't really miss having a terabyte. I thought I was going to miss, like, having a terabyte capacity. 500 gigs, it's really not bad. It's really not. So, yeah. Thank you guys for stopping by. Um, let me know if you guys have any questions. I will make sure to leave um, comments enabled for this video. Hope you guys had a good one. And, uh, you know, wash your hands, take care. And um, stay safe out there, guys. Catch you on the next video, and until next time.